this is Daily Devotion for Thursday, May 6th, and our reading this morning comes to us from the 8th chapter of Acts, beginning with the 9th verse. Now a certain man named Simon had previously practiced magic in the city, and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he was someone great. All of them, from the least to the greatest, listened to him eagerly, saying, This man is a power of God that is called great. And they listened eagerly to him, for a long time, because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, who was proclaiming the good news about God, in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. After being baptized, he stayed constantly with Philip and was amazed when he saw the signs and great miracles that took place. Now when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Holy Spirit had not come on, upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gifts with money. You have no part or share in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and the chains of wickedness. Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. Yeah, we don't read this story in church very often, do we? Many of us would be somewhat amazed to hear that there was an actual practicing magician anywhere in Scripture. I can't explain what it was that Simon the sorcerer did, and it doesn't matter. Because whatever it was he did that made people think he had power from God, it pales in comparison to the reality of what we see when Simon learns that the Holy Spirit is a thing that exists. He tries to buy it. He tries to buy that power so that he will have it and that he can give it to other people. What does that tell you? Now, whatever it was that Simon did that people thought was magic, he did it for money. He exchanged his tricks, his spells, his conjurings, whatever, for money. And he assumed that everything worked that way. But what do we know about the Holy Spirit? It's a free gift. You can't buy it. It's not for sale. The kingdom of God simply does not work like that. So Peter is very, very quick to rebuke him and to tell him that he is entirely wrong-headed about the nature of God's kingdom. Simon hears the lesson and decides to repent. And then, like a magician, poof, he disappears. And we never hear of him again. I think that's okay. He's just a character here intended to make a point. And once his point is made, he goes away. But what we can hold on to from this is a very clear understanding that the kingdom of God is not for sale. God does have things to say about our money and how we use it. The work of congregations and ministries ought to be supported. Those who labor do have a right to expect a wage for their labor. But the kingdom itself is not for sale. You can't buy your way in. You can only receive it as a gift. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the great gift of your spirit, a gift that comes to us without cost or earning, but is given simply out of divine fatherly love for us. May we receive and share this gift always. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again soon.